It's kind of weird, but I think they planned this ahead of time with the Ahsoka trailer and now with Jedi Survivor, because both of these Star Wars mediums just showed something that wasn't really explored previously. I mean, this craze with the orange-red lightsabers is just a recent phenomena that Canon was involved with. You remember that when Canon was first introduced, one of the major changes that was made was that there was no more synthetic colors on lightsabers, meaning that crystals would emit a color that was practically chosen by the crystal attaching itself to the user's aura, to the user's force. This is why some have blue lightsabers or green lightsabers, but specifically only Sith could have red lightsabers, and this is because they could bleed their crystal, make it bleed, so that it could make it suffer. The crystal through the suffering initiated by the user, as we clearly see in the Darth Vader comics, Darth Vader took a crystal from a Jedi Master and made it feel pain to such an extent that it turned red. It bled, essentially. This is the explanation in canon as to why the Sith have red lightsabers. But now, as we see in the Ahsoka trailer and in Jedi Survivor, there are these new type of dark side users that have orange-red lightsabers. I talked about this in previous videos when the Ahsoka trailer was first released, but we gotta talk about Jedi Survivor 2, because if you've played and if you've finished the game, you know that actually not one but two characters have have the same orange-red lightsaber that the villains do in the Ahsoka trailer. Both Dagon Gara and Bode Akuna have the same orange lightsabers that were seen in the Ahsoka trailer. What's even crazier is that we see Dagon Gara bleed his crystal right in front of us. When Cal first wakes him up, we see that his crystal is not yet turned, it's not yet bled, meaning that when he was frozen, he still did didn't go down the dark path fully. This is because, presumably, Centauri Kree, the moment she cut off his hand and saw that he had went towards a very dark path, she put him in stasis. When Cal wakes him up, he uses this opportunity to fully implement his new dark Jedi persona with bleeding his crystal not fully red, but at least orange-red. The same is seen with Boda Kuna. He was a former Jedi, now turned Dark Jedi, serving the Empire and he has the same orange lightsaber. So, in a way, what we were wondering about the villains in the Ahsoka trailer, basically, Jedi Survivor answered this clearly. And this is why I think they were actually planned ahead of time. The Ahsoka trailer released just before Jedi Survivor, just so that they could introduce this new lightsaber color that doesn't signify a Sith, but definitely signifies a dark Jedi or a dark side adept. Is there a difference between Balon's lightsaber color because it is much more vivid, colorful, and red-orange than these guys who have kind of orange lightsabers. His partner in crime is called Shin Hati, and she looks to be even more ferocious than him. In a way, he's the main enforcer, and she does the dirty work. As we see, she infiltrates a New Republic cruiser. She probably killed the entire crew, including the captain, in this short clip. Balon, of course, is focused focused on Ahsoka herself. As they meet upon this shrine who is already activated, you can see the signs that are emanating light behind them as their duel starts. I suspect this will be the moment where, where they enter the world between worlds and that's why they're fighting. But how did Balon and Shin actually achieve this lightsaber color? Why isn't it red if they are the bad guys? If indeed they are dark side cultists, their color should be easily red. Well, I'm here to explain in detail why this lightsaber color fits them perfectly. Now, the color itself is really interesting because the blade is not white emanating red, the blade is actually orange emanating an orange-red aura. If you look at these two colors, you can see the difference, red-orange between orange and red. The right side, this orange-red color, I think is what the lightsaber color actually is. Here is even the code of this color that the lightsabers are using. I saw some 
some fans saying that it's scarlet color, but I think orange red is the most accurate one. Now, some fans might say, what's the big deal with lightsaber colors? Well, it didn't used to be such a problem before Disney introduced the crystal bleeding in canon. You see, there are no more lightsaber colors per se. It's different for Jedi and Darksiders. Back in the day, in Legends, I mean, my fondest memories are playing KOTOR, and in that game, we could easily go and scavenge for kyber crystals with unique colors on them that we could exchange in order to get our lightsabers any colors we wanted. They were synthetic kyber crystals. Now, in canon, there are no more synthetic crystals. What Sith actually do is get a crystal from a Jedi and make it bleed so that it emanates red. This was explained by Palpatine in Darth Vader issue number one of the 2017 comic series and then implemented by Darth Vader himself when he got the crystal from Master Imphala and made the crystal bleed in issue number five. So in knowing this, we now understand that Ahsoka kind of did the same thing, but in reverse. Her white lightsabers was taken from the Inquisitor that she killed on Bracca. The red crystals were healed again and they were made to be white. It seems like Balon did the same thing, however, it did not come out completely red like Darth Vader's, it came out orange red. So why is this? Well, the answer lies with Darth Vader again. If we go back to Darth Vader, his lightsaber is not completely red like ordinary Sith. If you remember, Vader's lightsaber color is actually crimson. How do you get crimson? Well, we all know what the closest people to Anakin said when he turned to Darth Vader. Padme herself said it, that he still has good in him. Luke proved this in Return of the Jedi when he challenged his father and Vader was forced to save him, proving that there was still good in him. There was still that Jedi tucked deep inside. That's why Vader's color was ultimately crimson and not fully red. However much Vader accepted the dark side, there was still a bit of light in him, meaning that that small hint of blue inside of him still emanated in his lightsaber color being crimson, mixing the 99% of red with, with the 1% of blue, giving out the crimson color. And the same can be said, of course, for Balon and Shin Hati, who both have orange-red lightsabers. This actually proves that these two guys were not Darksiders from the beginning, they were actually Jedi Sentinels. And what lightsaber color did most Jedi Sentinels use? That's right, it was orange-yellow lightsaber. Not exclusively, of course, but most Jedi Sentinels include including Jedi Temple guards, used orange lightsabers. If we go by how Darth Vader's lightsaber color of crimson came out, we can kind of deduce how Balon's orange-red lightsaber came out as well. As much as they try to accept the dark side for unknown reasons, we're gonna find out of course more. Maybe they got lost in the unknown regions and subsequently went mad by the dark side, joined Thrawn ultimately. Again, whatever the reason is, the orange-red lightsaber came as a result of this. These two were former Jedi Sentinels turned Darksiders. They made their original yellow crystals bleed and it came out orange-red. This is why this unusual color never seen before in canon was presented in the Ahsoka trailer wielded by Balon and Prentice. It's really quite fascinating if you think about it, but even though this hints at their origins of formerly being Jedi Guardians or Jedi Sentinels, there is still much to learn about these two, and I, and I can't wait to do that in future videos. Ahsoka is seen battling an Inquisitor-looking dude as well in the trailer, but I don't think he is connected with Balon and Shin. I think that what Disney originally tried to do together with the Lucasfilm back in the day when they introduced the whole crystal bleeding and crystal healing thing now with Ahsoka 2. It's really original. It's an original idea that might have been really interesting to explore as the years went on. My problem with it is that they have never really explored it in live action or animated form, whatever the case. The only instance of crystal bleeding that was seen was, as I said earlier, in the Darth Vader issue number 5 that came out in 2017, guys, and that 
was one of the only times that that was explored a couple of times in the novels, but as we've seen, the comics and novels are not really reliable when it comes to canon. We have still yet to see somebody do that in live action for it actually to be kind of confirmed to be canon. You cannot outrun from it anymore, and I would love to see that implemented in some sort of a live action series or movie that would be spectacular. Alrighty guys, let me know what do you think down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below, subscribe for dailies. Now you have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video, and may the Force be with you. Until then.